As much as there are penalties to driving a car without a license, there are still cars you can drive without a driver's license legally, especially if your license is suspended and you want to get around without taxis. There is a good number of cars that can serve this purpose, but with limitations. The first car we're going to look at is the Citroën Ami. The Ami can be driven by a 14-year-old without driver's licenses in most countries, but if you want to drive one in the UK, you need to be at least 17. The car is wildly different, and it is technically not a car. It's a large electric quadricycle, and this makes it certainly and undeniably an excellent option for getting around towns and cities that are increasingly dominated by e-bikes and e-scooters. The Ami's electric motor produces just 8 horsepower and its top speed is restricted to 28 miles per hour. The official range is only up to 46 miles between charges and you can charge it to 100% in as few as 3 hours from a normal plug socket. The downside is that you can only charge the Ami using a 3-pin domestic plug so you can't use the usual public charging network as you would with other electric cars. The Citroën Ami is remarkably spacious considering its compact dimensions, but there's only space for one passenger, much like the Renault Twizy or Smart for 2 EQ. But the seats are side by side rather than in tandem arrangement like in the Twizy. There's enough space for two adults to sit comfortably in the seats and you won't find yourself struggling for headroom even if you're tall. Getting this car brand new will cost you about $6,500 to $7,000. Renault Tweezy The Renault Tweezy is an expensive, quirky, extroverted, and somewhat impractical way to show your green credentials. It looks more like a vehicle from a futuristic science fiction movie than something you can buy in a showroom today. The Twizy is easy to drive and fun on short trips, but ride comfort is poor. The Renault Twizy couldn't be easier to drive. You just have to hit the drive button on the dash, then throttle and you'll pull away in silence. As it carries most of its curb weight down low between the wheels, the Twizy offers plenty of grip thanks to its stiff suspension. But the firm setup means the ride is uncomfortable with even the smallest bumps leading to shudders through the cabin. Big bumps can send you flying out of the seat. The Twizy is powered by a 17-horsepower electric motor that produces 57 newton meters of torque, ensuring nippy performance around town at a top speed of 50 miles per hour. It can be fully charged in three and a half hours from a domestic power socket and provides up to 62 miles of emission-free driving. Prices are on par with conventional city cars, but it'll save you a lot on petrol as the Twizy is classed as a quadricycle. It doesn't qualify for government electric car grants, so prices start from £11,995 with the Dynamique trim at £12,695. Exam Coupe The Exam Coupe is a two-seater that may look like a city car, but is classed as a light quadricycle, which means it can be driven with a moped license. But it's not cheap, and teenage buyers will either have a very lucrative paper route or rich parents to cough up the hefty price tag of £9,999. That's £200 more than a basic new Ford Fiesta. On top of that, the insurance on the two-seater vehicle will also cost the average 16-year-old £2,200 per year based on an average mileage of 5000 and no accidents or convictions. The vehicle is powered by a 400cc diesel engine and comes with 12 months free road tax, has alloy wheels, and many usual mod cons found in a car including a CD player. Engineers fitted the Coupe S, which has a top speed of 28 miles per hour, with a diesel engine capable of 79 miles per gallon while emitting only 77 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer. And it looks really good. 
a kind of smart and Citroën DS3 love child. The aggressive slatted grill and white stripes add a bit of fake sportiness. Unfortunately, inside, it lacks the real quality of materials and fit and finish. Mahindra E20 This car particularly suits London's crowded streets, and it is a safer and more comfortable prospect than the G-Wiz. However, it doesn't represent great value for money. Mahindra E20 is significantly larger, heavier, and faster than some other electric cars, such as G-Wiz, so thankfully, it is required to meet the same safety standards as any car on sale. The recyclable plastic body panels are bonded to a steel frame in a purpose-built green factory in Bangalore in India. It comes with most of the safety kit we've now become accustomed to. The entry-level city model, starting from £12,995, gets two airbags, ABS, ESP, and Isofix points for the rear seats. Of course, given the price, you have to make some concessions in terms of quality. For a start, the 40-horsepower electric motor provides adequate performance up to 30 miles per hour at its best left in boost mode as it can feel a bit sluggish otherwise. Although the E20 can legally venture onto motorways, we wouldn't want to as any incline or high speed see it struggle to gain momentum. Plus, the claimed 80-mile range of the lithium-ion battery pack would drop the faster you go. At least the fast charger allows you to fully replenish the batteries in just 90 minutes, while the revive mode allows an extra 8 miles of emergency driving. Chatonet CH26 The first thought that will leap into mind upon seeing the CH26 is something like, oh, another mini Alfa Romeo Mito Potpourri baked in China. But maybe wrong. It's the work of a French company called Chatonet. Measuring just over 3 meters, the CH26 is 370 millimeters or about 4 inches longer than the second gen Smart 4 II. The two seater microcar is powered by a 523cc two cylinder diesel engine that spits out a mere 5.4 horsepower. The CH26 is sent to weigh in at 349 kilograms or 769 pounds and According to Chatonet, it can reach a top speed of 45 kilometers per hour or 28 miles per hour with average fuel consumption of 3.15 liters per 100 kilometers or 75 miles per gallon US, allowing to travel around 500 kilometers or 310 miles on a single tank of fuel. The Chatonet CH26 is sold for 12,991 euros. Tatsari Zero The Tatsari Zero is slightly longer and lower than the electric Smart 4 II. These compact dimensions make it a good city car, but also give it a pretty cool stance. As far as design goes, the Tatsari Zero reminds us of Mini's retro style. However, unlike the Mini's design, which is a mix between classy and conventional styles, the Zero's appearance is represented by a futuristic approach. For starters, the upper part of the body, the wheel arches and the side skirts, are all painted in a different color than the body, which gives the vehicle a unique appearance. As with most cars these days, the front end received the most attention from the company's designers. Featuring a set of twin, circular headlights mounted deep into the body, the front end looks pretty simple and elegant, without any extravagant lines to spoil the clean style. Speaking of performance, one of the features that sets Tazari electric cars apart is the man-machine interaction provided by four driving modes. By just touching the central dashboard, you can instantly change the performance acting on the acceleration, energy recovery, and electric braking power. Choose between the driving modes available, race, standard, economy, and rain for ideal autonomy and performance at all times. All Tazari electric vehicles are equipped with integrated multi-speed battery charger. In addition, the lithium batteries of all Tazari electric cars have no memory effect, so you can recharge them at any time and regardless of the remaining battery level. In any case, 
The display inside the car indicates the state of charge of your electric car at any time. Mahindra Revi In these troubled times of carbon footprints that leave a serious stain on the environment and serious hikes in fuel prices, a car like Mahindra's Reva is a beacon of light. Speaking of design, I'll be blunt, I'm not a fan of it. It's a little too boxy for me, although it's quite comfortable inside for two people and two people only. The back seat is just about useless for seating, even children, but it does add a little boot space to the vehicle. The seats recline quite a bit, providing a little snooze space if you just want to park and relax for a bit. Since there's no gearbox being an automatic car, there's plenty of leg room. It's also got quite a bit of headroom in the cabin, which is essential for those who happen to be in the six-foot range. Speaking of performance, the Reva I drives like a dream. It goes from 0 to 40 in just about 7.5 seconds, which is not bad for a small car like this. In traffic, it's got a great pickup, however, the lack of power steering can make maneuverability a little tedious. On the plus side, a small car like this has a good turning radius, making it easy to nip in and out of small spaces and take quick U-turns when you need to. Even with two people in the car, pushing her up to 65 kilometers an hour was easy, but she pretty much caps off at that limit, after which things tend to get a little shaky. Hope you learned something new today. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.